I fear no man. But that thing... It scares me. Stellaris The Machine Age is bringing a host of new features. One of those new features is the new player crisis path called Cosmogenesis. This path is going to let you become a fallen empire at the height of its power. And if you're not careful, you might also become a proper fallen empire later on as well. In this video, we're going to break down this new player crisis path and talk about all of the new information that has been revealed today. And oh my goodness me, I'm getting a lot of existential dread from some of this stuff, but it is really, really awesome. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, the devs are also bringing in a resync button. More about that at the end, but oh my lord. All right, let's dive in. Back in Nemesis, the developers introduced the Become the Crisis Ascension perk, which let an empire choose to embrace their darkest impulses, manipulating and concentrating fluctuations in the shroud created by horrific acts in a bid to its end to a higher existence. That crisis, now renamed the Galactic Nemesis, accumulated a resource called Menace by committing evil deeds in order to advance through its crisis path. Cosmogenesis, the new player crisis, has quite a different philosophy. Where the Galactic Nemesis operates through explicit malice, intentionally attempting to maximize the amount of suffering they can cause, an empire following the path of Cosmogenesis is more of a crisis to the galaxy due to callous indifference while pursuing what is theoretically a more noble cause. And ladies and gentlemen, if you know anything about the Zeely sequence by Stephen Baxter, let me just say we are going to be going full Zeely. Not because there's Fotino birds to fight, but um, just because we can. Of course, this all starts with an Ascension perk. And here is that Ascension perk. Time, gravity, and space are the fundamental cogs that make up the clockwork of reality. If we can learn to manipulate them, the universe and its secrets will be ours. Cosmogenesis can be selected as your fourth Ascension perk, and an important note to be made here, in 3.12, Galactic Nemesis will also be moved to become available as your fourth perk, no longer as your third perk. Like Galactic Nemesis, you cannot take it if you are the Custodian or the Emperor, or are not fully independent. Unlike the previous Crisis Path, however, this one is not locked to ethics. Even a xenophile pacifist can delude themselves into thinking that a small amount of possible unintentional suffering now may be a worthwhile sacrifice for a better future. We're going to have an insatiable curiosity. It is an axiom that science paves the way for progress. If we wish to fulfill our true potential, there can be no other path. Our technological mastery is self-evident, but far too much remains beyond our comprehension. The ways of the fallen empires, the power of the leviathans, and the mysteries of psionic insight. To glean meaning from the innards of reality requires a new kind of science and a new kind of computer. The synaptic lathe represents a significant first step on this journey to unlimited knowledge. Your scientists will be so preoccupied with whether they can or cannot that they will not stop to think if they should. Galactic Nemesis dealt with quantity over quality. Cosmogenesis empires are the complete opposite. We seek the secrets of fallen empires, desiring to reach the power they had in their prime. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be coming fallen empires in their prime. So kind of ascended empires or awakened fallen empires, I guess. But either way, this is going to be awesome. First up, here is our crisis screen. At level one, there is concern, then risk, then danger, then calamity, and finally existential threat. We need advanced logic to progress up this tree. We can see that at least 83,000 of this advanced logic stuff gets you all the way to level five. But we don't know if you actually need a lot less than that. Things that advance you on the tree. So in, in the menace system, you need to do things like vassalize empires, purge pops, horrific acts of barbarity that would shake the psyche of the galaxy. Here, however, we're doing something a little more erudite. 
researching technologies, retaining Scalarian vassals for a monthly upkeep, I believe that is of 150, it could be yearly, employing neural chips, we'll get to what neural chips are a little bit later, controlling science nexes, and securing galactic community support for your endeavors. I'm a little terrified that you can actually convince the community to support this crisis, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, on the center of this screen, we'll also notice a few cool bits and pieces. And I wanna outline what I think they are doing before we jump into the perks themselves. So, on the far left side, those are clearly Fallen Empire ship designs. At the bottom, that looks like it might be the Cosmic Needle ship we've seen in the trailers and heard so much about. Uh, no, we've not heard anything really, we don't know what it does. We do actually have some of the effects listed here, so we can take an educated guess at what the symbols in the center and on the right are though. So let's dive into those, uh, those items that we already have some info on. All right, let's go left to right, top to bottom. Perfect Arcologies. That was on level one. Simple Fallen Empire buildings can now appear as research options. So we're going to be able to research some of the great Fallen Empire buildings, probably like the, um, the, the Singularity Energy Source, which is a really good building to be able to just build. And then, as I mentioned, build those Fallen Empire buildings. That is crazy. Non-Baryonic Energy. I'm getting real Zeely vibes now. Unlocks the technology for dark matter power ship components. So instead of fighting fallen empires for their tech, we're going to research it ourselves. Golden Age, that was I think in tier two. No, maybe it was actually, uh, no, sorry, that was tier four. Golden Age, extraordinary fallen empire buildings can now appear as research options. And I believe the two levels in between tier one and four are more fallen empire buildings we're going to get. On the bottom left, Riddle Escort. Unlocks the technology for Fallen Empire Escort ships. That is pretty awesome. Gravitational Tools. Unlocks the Gravitic Brush technology that will bring us closer to fulfilling our goals. And on top of that, we get a monthly society research bonus of 10%. I believe that's going to stack on all research outputs, so it's a multiplicative modifier rather than additive. If it's additive, it's much less powerful than a 10% multiplicative research bonus. That would be crazy. Then finally, on the bottom right, we have the Paradox Titan. Unlock the technology for the Fallen Empire Titan ship. So yes, we can become fallen empires now. This is all about getting fallen empire buildings, fallen empire ships, and probably powers beyond that of the current fallen empires, powers of fallen empires at their height. I am so excited for this. I wanna try Cosmogenesis right now, oh my God. One of the shortcuts you can use to get there is the Synaptic Lathe, a powerful research facility that harnesses the power of mines to compute and store data, with a slight downside of burning them out over time. It can be upgraded twice and uses a simplified variant of the planet interface. Okay, this is a perk that comes along in the level one basically, and then we're going to get a technology. Let's dive in and have a look. The technology unlocked looks to be a tier five technology. Here it is costing 56,000 research. So we won't be doing this crisis very early on in the game. We're going to need to tech rush quite hard if we probably want to get this going before, you know, year 50 or year 100. Colossal in scale, the Synaptic Lathe is a reservoir computer. The processing power of our population's networked mines is used to compute and store data. The benefits are obvious, but some misguided species may view the transmutation of individuals into computing chips as morally questionable. If we look on the right hand side, we can see the planetary interface screen and we notice there are neural chips. We can also call them Pops, yes, Pops are now going to be employed on this planet as computer chips. I'm suddenly getting a strong urge to agree with the fanatic spiritualist fallen empire. I don't know what it is, but this seems somehow a little bit wrong. Mm. This is the synaptic lathe though. This is clearly the device we've seen in the trailers that is all about hooking minds up a little bit like uh, the matrix, I guess. But instead of using the bodies for energy, we're using the brains for processing power. Here we can see on the right hand side, I think that symbol uh, where we have all the planetary symbols, uh, there's a, a fifth, a sixth symbol that we're not used to, a brain with an up arrow, line must go up, that says 5%. I think that, if you'll notice, is similar to the neural chip 
uh, image, it's a brain there as well, I think that's neural chip efficiency. Because those neural chips are only producing one of each research and one neural chip point. Um, that's the advancement points we need for advancing this crisis. Being at 5% is probably why that output is so low, given that it has a massive energy upkeep of 7 for only 3 research and 1 progress point. There are also clearly building slots here and districts we can build that are going to have some effects. And the devs are telling us, yes, you can and should ascend the lathe. Let's find out a little more now about those districts. The districts unlock building slots and either increase research or advanced logic generated by the neural chips. Advanced logic is of course the resource we need to ascend with this crisis. The buildings can significantly modify many aspects of the synaptic lathe, whether it be synaptic preservers that reduce the burnout rate of neural chips, neural stabilizers that keep the chips content and less rebellious, or even synaptic overclockers will, which will increase the effectiveness of the neural chips but burn them out at a much quicker rate. We have noticed, if you saw on that previous screen, scroll back in the video to check if you didn't notice, but there is a pop declining window, which does seem to have a small amount of pop decline progress. So when you put pops in the synaptic lathe, they're going to decline over time. Interesting. The more neural chips you have contained within the lathe, the more effective it becomes as every chip, um, sorry, each time we're reading chips, of course, read pops, um, but every pop, improves the output of every other pop, resulting in a non-linear productivity growth curve, but make sure that there is always pops for the lathe to process or risk seeing it break down for lack of suitable components. Here is a neural gate. I believe this is one of the districts. It's going to cost us alloys and also cost us some of that advanced logic. So we're going to have to spend advanced logic to get advanced logic, kind of like money. This grants 15 housing, one additional building slot, and plus one base physics research from neural chips. If we build six of these darn things, then that's six additional base physics research, or research of every type, from the neural chips before any other research output modifies are applied. That's double the research of a regular researcher. Okay, so maybe we want to take all of our researchers and put them into this device. I can see now why the, uh, the, the, the man, the father in that initial trailer video said to his wife and son, don't try hard, don't excel at maths and the sciences, just live a simple life so you don't end up installed. Oh my goodness, this is horrific. Then let's go on to the Amplitive Speculator. This one is going to, of course, add more housing and an additional building slot. And on top of that, we'll get advanced logic from chips. So if we had six of these, we'd get three advanced logic per neural chip. We might end up going for three of each. I think the balance might be to go something like 5-1 or 4-2. Lots of research, because we can push lots of research that way and get lots of advanced logic. And then a little bit of advanced logic income from our neural chips. Over to the right-hand side, we can also see... Uh, all eight of the buildings. We don't know exactly what they do. Synaptic Resonator, that I think increases the upkeep, but also increases the resource output. I think that's a resource output symbol. Uh, neural Stabilizer, that is adding stability, so we don't have rebellions. Synaptic Overclocker, that is clearly adding more output and also uh, output to everything, but plus 100% pop um, uh, destruction rate. Synaptic Preserver, reducing that prop pop destruction rate 15%. Expanded Reactor, that is reducing all of the upkeep costs by 15%, I think on everything. Uh, energy and, and whatever the other ones are there. Synaptic Sustainer, that is granting more housing and more amenities, which should grant us more stability. Synaptic Cogitator, that's granting 1% uh, naval capacity and 2% something. Anyone know what that something is? Not quite sure what that symbol is. Minus 50 amenities and minus 35% uh, resource output. That seems quite quite a costly building. Synaptic Validator, 1% research speed for minus 20 stability. Huh. Not sure that's really worth it. I suspect we want this planet to be maximally stable and have the maximum output possible while also reducing population decline, unless we're going out and conquering stuff. Lots and lots of conquests to put pops in here. I, I can see having the nihilistic bombardment stance be very, very powerful with this uh, type of empire. Going out and just stealing pops rather than planets might be the way to go.
to streamline the process of recruiting <clears throat> volunteers for the synaptic lathe, you can set species to use the synaptic service purge type, which will automatically resettle pops to the lathe over time. Every year, pops are resettled into the synaptic lathe with a purge on average speed of 0.25 pops per month and planet at base speed. Each pop has a 5% chance of escaping to become refugees. That's quite low. Minus 25% happiness though. Duty calls and the brave and the bright answer its call. We bear our thoughts as torches to banish the darkness of ignorance and superstition. Step forth brave ones and burn. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And if you're enjoying this video, please register for synaptic service now using that like button. At rank four, you'll gain the ability to experiment upon reality through your applied infinity theses. These allow you to attempt to make improvements on a stubborn reality, which can have galactic or localized effects. Sometimes these go well. These are dangerous technologies. Let's take a look. Applied Infinity Thesis. By making further alterations to reality's rules, we can better monitor its reactions. At this scale, the effects are still difficult to predict and could affect the entire galaxy. Crikey, these, these seem like very, very, very stupid people. Um, sorry, but like, what are they doing? Um... Okay, I, it turns out, you know, it turns out maybe I'm much more spiritualist aligned in Stellaris than I at first thought, because I'm all for the synth ascension stuff. But this, this scares the crap out of me. All right, let's find out what some of these effects are. Alloy ductility, another successful change to reality. This is minor and affects our alloys, making them lighter and sturdier. While small in scope, the change was enacted on the entire galaxy and we are monitoring how long it will remain valid in this universe. I'm assuming that means we get a reduction to build cost maybe, or perhaps we are just producing more alloys. Infinity Thesis, stable success. We successfully altered the flow of time. After experiments on empty regions of space, we felt confident enough to attempt the process on one of our colonies and it worked. Time will flow faster there with an estimated 20.53% increase. There will be some communication and travel issues, but we'll sort these out. Oh god, so that's going to increase pop growth and resource output on that planet by 20.537% surely? And that will be a multiplicative modifier I'm going to assume? Holy crap! Okay, maybe I do like these folks. Maybe I do like them. Also, those time, uh, those time effects, that, that artwork reminds me very, very much of one of the astral rifts we enter. Perhaps in one of the astral rifts, we're actually finding cosmogenesis uh, activity, cosmogenesis stuff going on. The devs added a note underneath that uh, imagery. For our next experiment, let's round pi to three. It'll make calculations so much easier. Oh God, engineers. Honestly, I've seen in, um, sorry for a quick side note, but I've seen in actual degree level uh, papers, examination papers for engineering, where pi has been rounded to one, five, and 10. And honestly, anything less than 3.14, and what's the point? What's the point? Let's move on. Okay, but other times things don't quite go as planned. And the simple folk from other empires that just don't understand may get upset. That's what this event is doing. We've gained 5,500 advanced logic, but our relations with all other empires have deteriorated. Frustratingly for us, reality is resilient and does not take kindly to ahem, adjustment. But the Infinity Sphere has been nice enough to provide a potential solution. A new universe would be much more malleable than this ancient one that is stuck in its ways. Enter victory in the horizon and the horizon needle. This reality is flawed, marred by entropy, physical needs, and violence. While we cannot change it, we can leave it behind. Let us enter the unknown and find a young universe where our edits to reality will hold. Let us shape it to perfection, the haven our civilization deserves. We have prepared the plans for an extraordinary ship, the Horizon Needle. 
This mobile megastructure is not geared for war, but its ability to bend the laws of physics will enable us to embark our entire civilization. Together, we will dive into a black hole of our choosing, abandoning this reality for one of our own creation. So just like the Zeely, we're going to be saying bye-bye to this baryonic universe in favour of another one where the laws of physics are a bit more preferable. We're not doing that though because the universe is dying of old age young, thanks to some Fotino birds or anything, we're doing it because we're selfish. Um, or, or we just really want to leave, I don't know, whatever, let's move on. Once the Horizon Needle is completed, the exodus will begin. It is time to embark the people from your colonies onto the ship, and go forth into a bold new world. The time of our departure has come. In preparation for the Great Exodus, the Horizon Needle will be sent to welcome our people on board. To embark our entire civilization, the Horizon Needle must visit every colony we own and embark its population, return to our capital to embark the rest of our people, and move to a black hole and dive within. Warning. The Horizon Needle has no weapons and needs to be carefully protected. Okay, okay, so we're basically going nope and just gonna nope out of this whole universe because we don't like physics? That sounds very petty, but um, sure, let's do it. Uh, no moral judgments on this end, I suppose. Let's, let's, let's see where we're going with this. Should you succeed, a perfect new universe will be created to your specifications and your people will have endless and true understanding. Based on some of the choices you make during the Exodus situation, there are several endings to your journey. Here we can see at last, we have won the game. And, uh, and then, then you win. But you might be asking, what happens to this universe, the one you leave behind? Well, that's not really your problem anymore at that point, is it? Well, if you are wondering, the devs are telling us that it doesn't all explode, uh, that would be a terrible senseless waste. Okay, parts do, but that's really just collateral damage. Every ending is a new beginning, do not forget that. When, you know, when, when the universe closes a door, it does generally open a window. The after effects of your final experiment will ripple across the galaxy, causing significant problems for those that were left behind. A control group of your civilization that elected to stay behind and observe will then protect itself and the rest of the galaxy unfortunately will not be so well prepared. Enter the time warp. As time finally resumes flowing, once more we find free to act. It is impossible to know how much time has passed since the foundation of Dekronia breached their black hole. Were they successful? We don't know. The galaxy lies in ruins and their former territories are barren. Of their immense empire, only the core sector remains and it has progressed beyond recognition. How long have we spent stuck in this time stasis? The grammar also according to the devs is damaged in that time stop so, so that's why that, uh, that was a bit confusing to read. <laughs> You then get the ability to select a new empire to continue the game after losing the game, or winning in this case. They've chosen to let you to continue to explore the fate of the universe after Cosmogenesis empires complete their mad goal. Your old empire will remain in the game now as a true fallen empire. Our empire as a fallen empire remnant. Here they are, the foundation of Dekronia, a fallen empire. So. Basically, it goes full circle, and this would also imply that all of those fallen empires in the galaxy all completed their horizon needles and left this universe and thus left behind a control group, a fallen empire. That's quite a massive change to the Stellaris law, if that's what the intention here is. I'm assuming some fallen empires will just be possibly somehow fallen, though what made them fall? Is this what makes all empires that ascended fall? Is it that... When you finally leave this universe, it causes spacey wacy timey wimey stuff to happen. Very, very interesting. I'm really excited to try out uh, Cosmogenesis, though, to get my hands on all of this Fallen Empire tech and become uh, a true awakened Fallen Empire at the height of its power. You know, proper Time Lord stuff. We've got one more piece of important news that I need to go through. The multiplayer resync button is coming. Let me just... Brace yourselves again, sorry. Let just 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 sit down again, in case you think you misheard me. 
the multiplayer resync button is coming. Another feature the devs are adding in 3.12 is the multiplayer resync button. This button, as the name suggests, will resync a game to hopefully allow you to continue if an out of sync error occurs. Thank you, holy developers. In your name we trust. It won't always solve the issues, but when it does, it'll save you some time as you'll no longer have to quit and rehost the game. I am ecstatic. I mean, I might not sound ecstatic. I'm a little blown away at this news. This is crazy. Um, it, wow, 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 wow. Now, I've asked about a bit. Basically, it sounds like if there's an error which is causing a desync to happen periodically, like um, let's say there's something triggering every day or every month in game, that probably won't help as much because you'll have to click the resync button every time. However, for those random desyncs you get, where there's just like something happens, one singular event, and it causes a desync, no longer will the entire game have to be rehosted or people have to quit and rejoin and risk causing further desyncs. Instead, we can just click the resync button. Oh my goodness me, it's amazing. It's honestly amazing. Thank you, developers. Thank you, Eladrin. Oh my lord, this is going to make my multiplayer tournaments easier. All multiplayer events in general just got a little bit easier. This is going to basically be adding in, in essence, playability and stability for multiplayer games. If you enjoyed this video on the new player crisis coming in the machine age, but you'd like to find out more about the new endgame crisis coming in the machine age, along with the two new DLC that Paradox have announced that will release after machine age for Stellaris, click the video on screen now.